NHL DFS breakdown, FanDuel and DraftKings. I'm your host, Brian Jester, at Brian Jester FF on Twitter, as you see right here. Co founder of OccupyFantasy.com. Uh, so, like I said, we had a few requests for this. Uh, people wanted us to analyze hockey slates using the Occupy Fantasy model, using the Occupy tools, show people how to make lineups, and uh, analyze a slate specific. Uh, uh, do a slate specific stream and we'll try to do more of these throughout uh, the next couple of months whether it's NBA or NHL as well um, again if you are watching this replay on YouTube we do this live on Twitch twitch.tv slash Occupy Fantasy and uh, be sure to follow us there to be notified when we're live if you're watching us now live got the mic working so hop in the chat ask any questions you have along the way um, I'm sure there will be plenty of questions as I'm talking through breaking down the slate uh, a quick logistical note remember twitch subscribers to occupy fantasy now get access to our discord details below the video and uh, you if you have Amazon Prime you can get it for free just connect your Amazon Prime account to your twitch account and you can subscribe to one streamer hopefully it's us and you will get that free uh, free twitch subscription and then you can get access to our discord where our members are chatting and discussing strategies and lineups uh, for different DFS sports. Uh, so let me get this retweeted from my account really quickly. And then we will get this started. So what you're seeing here now live on screen is the line stack dashboard, OccupyFantasy.com. This is our Occupy model. And as you'll see here, the various tabs, we talked about this in our, our first NHL stream uh, about a week ago. Uh, broke broke down how to use the model, what goes into it, but uh, just a quick refresher here. Break it out into the different positions: centers, wingers, defensemen, and goalies. And then we both have the even strength stack, so each individual line and each power play stack. So again, if you have questions at any time, please stop me. I will answer them. Um, it'll make this uh, go a little bit smoother, so you don't hear my voice uh, just rambling on for. For minutes at a time so if you have questions please uh, please feel free to interrupt so let's jump right into it let's talk about what I like to do uh, from a high-level perspective uh, when I start researching an NHL DFS slate to figure out what I'm going to do for that particular night so what I first do I'll go to the goalies tab I'll click goalies and what I'd like to do is see, okay, which teams are projected to be uh, in high go goal scoring spots? And how can we do that? Well, the easiest way is to look at Vegas. Uh, tons of money is being wagered on these games. Vegas has incentives. And by Vegas, I mean offshore books and, and, and sports books of all kinds of the betting markets in general. Uh, they have incentive to put out sharp lines. And uh, by looking at this, and also, you know, in addition to us realizing where high scoring spots are, a lot of people. Uh, in DFS generally look to these spots as well. So you'll see teams that are projected for the most goals have high ownership. There's no surprise. A lot of people, uh, especially in NHL where advanced analytics uh, and models aren't, you know, very uh, accessible. Um, a lot of times that's what many people have to go off of. So what I'd like to do here, I'll look at opposing team total. I'll take a look at this first and just sort by opposing team total. Um, so we'll see Martin Jones of the Sharks is facing Toronto tonight um, and Toronto has a pretty big team total of 4.06 goals they have the number one team total rank on the slate and uh, just a, a little quirk tonight there is one 6 p.m. Eastern game Colorado and Vegas uh, we're in the process of getting a single game dashboard added to the Occupy model and and uh, as well as uh, some other single game aspects some tiers as well so we're going to we're going to ignore the colorado and vegas game today because it's not on the main slate uh, maybe at the end of the stream we'll do a little single game strategy so if you see here if you if you ignore the colorado vegas game toronto has a 4.06 gold team total the next closest team the islanders second highest team total on the slate third overall for the day down at 3.26 goals so a pretty wide gap between these top two teams um, so to me, initially, it says as long as the Occupy model agrees for the skaters, we should probably look to get Toronto skaters into our lineup first and foremost, um, and definitely 
in, in low risk lineups for sure. And I see Nick Double Eagles is in the chat uh, asking, you know, please discuss stacking strategies in cash lineups. Yeah, so that's where we'll start for sure. Um, you know, NHL I think is is very conducive to high risk lineups because of the stacking and the correlation. Uh, but you know, there's certainly days and slates where you'll want to play low risk as well. And today actually looks like one of those slates. So, um, so let's take a look here. Okay, so we got the high team totals. Toronto, the Islanders, and then, you know, a bunch of teams stacked in this middle range of, of three implied goals because you look minus 110 on each side, uh, total of six, one, two, three, four teams bunched in that three goal range, Buffalo and Detroit, Vancouver and Washington, um, and not a huge gap between the, these middle of the pack teams. So, um, so yeah, so Toronto it looks like just initially looks like a team that will want to get some exposure to based on their high total. Uh, let's look at just the goalies now in general, and we'll see Frederick Anderson, the top main slate goalie, eight point eight OF index. Just a quick reminder for those watching, OF index is our proprietary metric, takes into account fifty to hundred different metrics on the back end, spits out one easy to read number that ranks every player on the slate at each position. So see Frederick Anderson, 8.8 off index, pretty decent gap between him and Jimmy Howard, the next closest. And what we'll notice the most about Frederick Anderson is his high money line and his win percentage as a result, his projected win percentage. So not only do the Toronto Maple Leafs have the highest expected goal total, they're, they're also, they also have the highest uh, win expectation for their goalie. They have the highest money line. So you are looking at a very nice stack here with a goalie and his lines because think about it think of this correlation if if the skaters are scoring that's more goals for the team obviously and that gives the goalie a higher chance of winning so having a three three one stack with the three skaters and the goalie or a couple skaters and the goalie just adds extra upside to your lineup and it's not something we try to force but if the model and the betting markets are telling us that this is a good spot to do it uh, it certainly makes a lot of sense um, because if you look, if, you, if we just sort by money line, Toronto minus 180, the next closest on the main slate is the Islanders at minus 130 and uh, pretty big gap, 8% difference, 8 percentage point difference in expected win percentage. So, uh, you know, for low risk contests, especially on FanDuel, DraftKings change of scoring and we talked about this in uh in the very first nhl stream a few days ago um and you know shots are way more important now in DraftKings, uh both for skaters and especially for goalies the win bonus was reduced dramatically um so you're really looking for goalies who will get a lot of shots faced you still want them to get the win obviously in low of, of projected opposing team totals of course um but on fandle where you get that 12 point bonus the money line is your is your friend, it's your best friend. Um, and especially on FanDuel where we have Anderson at minus 180, looks like the top low risk option. Yeah, I mean, and, and just to kind of reiterate, if we sort by OF index, to me, I, you know, I, I jump into this immediately. I see a top ranked goalie with the number one money line with uh, on the slate, the lowest opposing team total, and he has favorable line movement. You see a seven cent move. They opened at minus 173 for the Maple Leafs. And over the course of, you know, this morning, seven cent move, uh, the line has moved in Toronto's favor. The opposing Sharks team total has dropped, you know, minimally, but it has dropped. So all these signs point, point towards we should probably put Anderson as our low risk goalie for sure. Um, I see the Prince803, who is, is a Twitch Prime subscriber in the chat. So he's always late. Yeah, he is always late, actually. But uh, welcome. I know you asked specifically about NHL. Um, and uh, we're going to walk through it here. And if you missed anything at the beginning, you can always watch the replay on Twitch. And it'll also be uploaded to YouTube immediately after the fact. So uh, many ways you can get the content if you missed it at the beginning. Um, and for those of you watching, if you have questions, feel free to ask. All right, so we've, we've, what we've covered so far, uh, the Maple Leafs have a high total. They have the highest total by a wide margin. Their goalie has a high, high money line and a low opposing team total. And those two together, mm, looks like we should put those guys in our low risk lineups. Very simple. Um, so what's the next step? What, what, do we, what do we do next? 
Okay, let's go to the even strength stack dashboard to see where Toronto ranks in the Occupy model. Their skaters. We see the goalie ranks high, but do their skaters line up with the fact that the betting markets have them in a good spot? So we click even strength stacks. And we'll see here that while not number one overall, Toronto does have, especially their first line, a really high ranking in the stack dashboard. Um, so their first line skaters rank pretty favorably. And in fact, if you look at it, despite uh, having the highest team total on the slate, um, this was actually a new addition between uh, the first stream and this stream. Thanks to some feedback we got from our members, a DK dollars column and a FanDuel dollars column. This shows the total cost of the stack on both FanDuel and DraftKings. And then just add it yesterday, we have projected ownership for each stack on FanDuel and DraftKings. Um, yeah, and as Miller Park drunk points out, lower owned projected. We'll see if that ends up being the case. This may change throughout the day. Um, but yeah, the fact that we may get some lower ownership on Toronto is pretty nice. So we'll see. Um, and yeah, shout out to Miller Park, who is a, a newish subscriber and has some success uh, taking down some satellites, which we'll talk about here near the end on uh, uh, on strategies we should be using because we've had a lot of members talk about GPPs. We've had a lot of members talk about different contests that they're playing, but especially in NHL, especially on FanDuel, uh, there, are, there are these usual suspect satellites that we should be targeting, and we'll get to those here in a second. Uh, all right, so Toronto, top in the betting markets, top three line stack. They're relatively cheap. Their goalie ranks highly. To me, this is speaks we should do a Toronto line one stack with their goalie to start our low-risk lineups. Seems pretty simple to me. And remember on FanDuel, uh, you, have to, you can only have four guys from the same team. Um, so it means we'll probably just do three skaters from Toronto and their goalie. Uh, and I think I'll build one here. I'll, I'll show just my process of building uh, how this looks. So let's open up FanDuel. And we're playing a low-risk lineup. So, so we, by low risk, we mean head to heads, 50 fifties, double ups, small leagues, three to 20 players, depending on how much correlation we have. If we have a lot of correlation in our low risk lineup, we can certainly, um, enter it into uh, more high risk reward contests, like, like quintuple ups and multipliers, triple ups, these other, these smaller leagues, as we say. Um, but let's start with, let's start with a double up. So we'll go to 50, actually we'll go to multipliers. Um, as we'll see, okay, let's take a look at this, you know, for smaller bankrolls, maybe $2 is your allocation for the slate. Um, and you'll look at this very first double up. Uh, it's massive. It's a pretty big field, which is nice from a variance perspective. You know, we get more, more entries. We're not going to get screwed by just a couple of lineups that beat us. However, I don't know if we'll see here on the screen. Yeah, you can see it up here. 60. 60 max entries. So if you only put one lineup in, there are other people who are putting in 60 entries into this contest. It's not something you want to do. Unless you're able to get close to this max, uh, you want to stay away from, especially double ups where, um, you know, multiple people are entering the same lineup or people are entering the same lineup 60 times, uh, something that you definitely want to avoid. Same with this big $5 double up. It's multi-entry. And you can tell over here on this right side where it says multi-entry under the dollar amount. Um, but thankfully there's one right below it. It's 113 players, $2 double up single entry. Uh, this is about as good as we'll get for single entry on FanDuel. Um, so let's take a look. Cool. Yep. Top 50, double the money. Uh, let's enter a new lineup. And now throughout the day, these new, uh, contests will open. You know, starting from early in the morning up until lock, the softest competition is generally at lock. Um, but sometimes there aren't many con uh, contests available before lock. So you have to find a nice balance of, of, of when to enter your contest. Just always keep an eye out. Ideally, if you have time throughout the day, you should be looking uh, in the lobbies, both on FanDuel and DraftKings for contests that open up, contests that have players with uh, inexperience. Uh, so let's clear this. Um, shout out to Nick in the chat who donated a single bit. Thank you, Nick. appreciate that. Uh, if you like what we're doing, certainly subscribe. Uh, definitely hit that follow button at the top. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button uh, to get the latest videos, be notified when we're up and live. 
Um, and if you like what we're doing, uh, we appreciate the donation from Nick, a single bit. Uh, again, not required, but we do appreciate it. Um, okay, so we said start with the goalie. Uh, Frederick Anderson, 8,800 on FanDuel. So we'll put him into the lineup. And our next goal, we saw that Toronto was highly ranked in the betting markets. We saw that they were highly ranked in the stack dashboard. They're, you know, pretty affordable. They're line one. Um, so let's go back to it. Remember Toronto line one, number three overall, overall line ranking. So what we'll do is we'll go to the centers tab and, you know, maybe we'll get, uh, I'd love to hear feedback on how people use this and maybe it's a little easier than just opening separate tabs, but we'll look at Toronto's, uh, skaters, both in the centers and the wingers tab. Um, so we see Austin Matthews line one power play one. We go over to the wingers. We see uh, Janssen and Nylander. The best part about Toronto now is that not only are Matthews and Janssen and Nylander playing on the same even strength line, they're also on the same power play. So we get ultimate, ultimate correlation uh, when these guys are on the ice together. And these are the types of, of, of plays we want in our lineups. You know, if they play on the same line, that's some good correlation. But if they play on both the same line and the same power play, Literally every time these guys are on the ice, they have a chance to have an assist, assist goal. And that's how you really shoot up your contest leaderboards. All right. So remember, you know, in addition to having a center and two wingers, uh, defensemen also play on the ice with these guys. They're also part of the power play unit. So we should also check uh, the Toronto defensemen to see if any of them line up. So we'll go to the defensemen tab. We'll look at Toronto. Um, Morgan Riley, who has been doing pretty well and is priced up, uh, not expected to be on the power play unit tonight. We'll see if that updates after this morning skate. Generally, these teams skate in the morning and lines are updated. The model will update uh, if that's the case. But since he's now on the power play unit and he's pretty pricey, um, I mean, we could go Jake Muzzin, excuse me, who is on the first power play unit. Um, but, you know, in general, I would prefer to go center, winger, winger, and then fill in an island defenseman in this case. So let's go back to FanDuel and let's get Toronto guys. So we'll put Matthews in. Fortunately, Nylander and Janssen are pretty, pretty cheap, relatively. So now we have... Uh, the four-man Toronto stack in our cash lineup. And some people may ask, is this too much correlation in a, in a cash game lineup? Well, individually, all these guys are great plays. And in NHL, it's not like NBA where you get a bucket and a rebound and an assist and a bucket and a steal. And it's incremental points throughout the, throughout the night. Here, it's like MLB. It's kind of like NFL where we have big events that dramatically impact scoring, home runs, goal scored, touchdowns and you should be aiming for those events when you can and by you know it's hard to have a high floor granted these guys take shots these guys are on the ice but you know it's not easy to have a high floor in hockey it's not easy to have a high floor in MLB yeah you get more at bats in MLB you get more ice time in NHL but really what you're aiming for is those correlated goals because when we get um, an Austin Matthews goal that's assisted by Nylander and Janssen we get eight points for each assist at 16. We get 12 points for the goal plus the shot, so 13.6. Um, and we're looking at uh, close to 30 points. And that's just massive in, in NHL DFS. So when in doubt, correlate, even in low risk lineups, you know, maybe you go, maybe you don't do the, the, the full four by four stack in NHL low risk. You know, high risk, you wanna maximize your correlation if you can. But in low risk, we get it. We understand that, you know, Maybe the full stacks are too much. You can go, you know, a couple two-man stacks, a three-man, three-man stack. Um, so we'll see how, how the rest of this lineup plays out. But, you know, just what the betting markets are telling us, what the Occupy model is telling us, this is a very easy start to our low-risk lineup. Uh, and remember, if you're watching this and you're not already following us, you can follow me at Brian Jester FF on Twitter. Be sure to follow us at Occupy Fantasy. And you can get access to the Occupy model that we've been showing on OccupyFantasy.com. Um, so DePrince has a question in the live Twitch chat. How can you determine high risk stacks? Uh, great question. Um, we'll finish out this lineup 
after I answer this question, and we'll, we'll we'll talk more in detail after I finish this, after I finish this uh, finish this lineup. But high risk stacks generally, if I can find it. So we'll see. This is probably a high risk stack. Buffalo line one. They have a a mediocre team total, middle of the pack, as does Washington. And what is kind of scary is that both of these teams have negative team total moves. So since the lines opened early this morning. Uh, Buffalo's implied team total has dropped nearly 0.4 goals. The Capitals have dropped nearly 0.3 goals. So pretty scary times. They're also pretty expensive. Um, really high-risk stacks are stacks that rank highly in the stack dashboard, or you find some guys individually uh, that rank highly um, in the individual units, uh, positional units, uh, and their team total doesn't really match up. That's really what it comes down to me, for me. That's how I generally find high risk stacks. If team totals and rankings align in the model, low risk. If one or the other, high risk. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, Patrick in the chat. What's up, Patrick? Uh, I know he's a follower and member. Is hockey a better cash game sport or GPP? What are some high tar what are some target scores uh, for cashing? Um, good question. Generally, you want to try to hit that. Uh, you know, that three times mark is always solid on FanDuel. Um, I don't play cash games as much, so I, I'll i be honest. I don't have the the answers to the target line you're, cash, you're, you're looking for. Um, but generally try to get the 150 on FanDuel, 200 plus in high risk contests. Um, and it's going to change slate to slate. Slate like last night was relatively low scoring. And DraftKings obviously is different as well. For me, as I said, as I stated at the top of the video, um, you know, hockey is, is very conducive to high risk lineups, high risk um, GPPs, leaks, satellites, just because of the correlation aspect. Um, and Nick, who definitely plays a ton of hockey in the chat, says DK is between 80 and 100 uh, for cash games. So, so use that. Um, I would trust what Nick is saying there. Great questions. Any more questions? Definitely keep them coming. Actually, you know what? Let me uh, let me retweet this really quickly. All right. Okay, let's get back to uh, our low risk lineup that we're that we're thinking about building. And now, you know, we've had this on the on the on the streams before, where we've practiced building lineups, and people use the exact same lineup. I mean, I guess if you want to do that, you can. That's not the intent of this. The intent is to show the process. Um, and in fact, you know, we still have seven hours until lock. The lineup that I'm creating may change. The the odds may change. Generally, in fact, these team total moves. These these uh. If we go back to the goalie dashboard, um, these money line moves, a lot of times we'll, we'll see big changes after morning skate. Uh, we see how lines are shaping up, which guys are in or out. Um, so normally between like noon and three, we'll see some pretty decent line moves. Uh, I'm, it's kind of surprising to see these big of moves this early in the day. Um, so generally for me, I try to wait until, you know, three or four o'clock Eastern to start building my lineups to see how these, uh, these line moves in the betting markets are, have changed uh, since the morning. Um, but, you know, if, if you only have the lunch break to do it, it's certainly not a problem. All right, what's the next move? We have our three Toronto skaters. We have our Toronto goalie. What should we do next? How do we fill it in? So I think the next best bet I like to do is, all right, let's go back to Vegas. Who else is projected for high totals? So we'll go back to the goalie dashboard. We'll sort by team total. We'll see that the Islanders are, uh, you know, pretty clear number two favorite for goal score tonight at 3.26. And then we have that that uh, that bunched grouping right below them. So we'll see how the Islanders look in the stack dashboard. So we bring it up, and we don't see the Islanders ranked that highly. We have, you know, the Islanders' first line is the ninth overall line tonight. We do have line two, who is the cheapest of the top 12 stacks, uh, right behind them. And another another nice thing that I'm noticing now is that the Islanders do have a little positive team total bump of 0.13 goals. That's pretty nice. Um, maybe this Islanders second unit is pretty nice. You know, pretty cheap, likely can fit in with Toronto's top stack. Let's take a look at how, because um, 
Toronto was pretty fortunate where their top line also plays in the top unit. Not all teams are like that. Some teams, top liners play with different players on the power play unit. Um, maybe the Islanders are like that. Let's see how the Islanders' power play is stacking up. And remember, if you have zero idea about hockey, power play is when the other team commits a penalty. That player is forced to be removed from the ice for a couple minutes, depending on the, 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 the strength of the penalty. And now this team plays five on four. Obviously, a very good goal-scoring opportunity when the other team is down a man. Um, and a lot of times, we get that correlation here. Um, so as we'll see, New York's top power play unit, not ranked particularly high, but way higher than their second unit. So maybe we find guys on that second line who also play on the top power play unit. Maybe. Maybe that's a thing. So let's go to the let's go to the centers and wingers and see what we're looking at here. So let's, let's look at the Islanders we're using the team filter here on each position. Okay, well, there you go. Nice little uh this this was working out pretty nicely. I promise I didn't didn't plan this, but Brock Nelson plays on that second line that's pretty cheap. But he also plays in that first unit power play. That's that's a nice start. Maybe we maybe we stack up Brock Nelson with some other Islander skaters. Let's see if the wingers are cooperating as well. Well, here we go. Anthony Beauvillier, also on the second line, also really cheap, also on the first unit power play. Okay, so maybe we have a Nelson Beauvillier stack to keep us going. I like that. Um, now you may be asking here, okay, where are the, where's the other second line skater? Where is he for the Islanders? Well, it turns out he's actually a center tonight. He's listed as a center, Derek Broussard. Uh, so we're likely not going to be able to play him. He is pretty cheap, so keep an eye on that if you're playing on DraftKings or if you're making a different lineup on FanDuel. He is pretty cheap. Um, and, you know, one thing about this, Florida was very um, – uh, was known for this last year with guys like Trocek and uh, – uh, uh, the other center whose name is escaping my mind, play on the same power play unit. You know, you can get a very unique lineup, especially in high risk contests by playing two centers from the same squad. They either play on the same line and they're, they're, uh, they're labeled wrong. Uh, their positions are wrong on fan door draftings or they play on the same power play unit. So it's another way to, to do that. Um, all right. So we got Brock Nelson and we have Beauvillier. So we're probably not going to get a third, a third skater with them, maybe a defenseman. Let's look at Islanders defenseman. All right, so they have two guys that are in their own little tier, you know, 7.2 OF index, 7.1, and then a decent drop off. Uh, Devin Tays, Toes. Again, I don't watch hockey. I should probably figure out how to pronounce this. And I'll do that right now. But as we see, uh, he's on the first unit power play and he's relatively cheap, 4,600. And Taves, Devon Taves. So there we go. Learn something new every day. That's how you pronounce his name, Devon Taves. So Devon Taves, 4,600 Fanduel, plays in the first unit power play, offers some correlation. To me, it looks like we do a, a three-man Islander stack to add into this. Again, it's not a full stack, so not a ton of risk, uh, but we still get that, that added correlation of playing three guys on the same power play unit. So let's, let's go to the Islanders here. They're playing Ottawa, so that's always nice. Ottawa, if you're not familiar, is the Miami Dolphins of the uh, of the NHL. Except I don't know if the Ottawa Senators are actually trying to lose. I just think they don't care about winning, as opposed to the Dolphins who are actively tanking and trying to lose. Uh, maybe someone more tuned in NHL can let me know about that. Okay, so we got Brock Nelson at center. Bobillier, winger. Taves. All right, so we got four-man Toronto stack, including the goalie. Three-man Islanders stack. So we have a winger and a defense left. You know, me personally, I'm a sucker for correlation. I'm a, I love playing guys on the same team. Ideally, here we get uh, a winger-defenseman correlation. Now, granted, center-defenseman, center-winger are the strongest correlations. Winger-defenseman, not as strong of a correlation. So it's not imperative here. Maybe we just find guys that are highly ranked in the model, especially in a low-risk lineup. Just find guys highly ranked in the model that, that finish out uh, this lineup. And we have 6,300 per player, which is pretty nice. Um, so for me, I, I, if, if there's a choice, um, I'll leave defensemen last 
you know, like I said, the correlation isn't as strong at that position. Uh, I'd prefer to have an island play there. And if I have to fit in somebody last in my lineup, it'll be a defenseman. So let's look at winger and maybe, um, and maybe the Occupy model can tell us something. Again, if you're watching this live, appreciate it. Be sure to ask questions in the chat. We'll be here for about maybe 13 more minutes. Replay will be up on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and follow whichever uh, platform you're watching this on. Uh, let you get notified uh, whenever we go live and have videos. All right, wingers. Ovechkin, Skinner, Reinhardt. These guys all rank, I mean, and especially Ovechkin and Skinner, who are, you know, one, two in the winger dashboard and have a massive OF index of 10.2, 10.1, and then a drop off to 8.7 to the next guy on the main slate in Sam Reinhardt. So I would say we probably want to get one of Skinner or Ovechkin in the lineup. Um, 8,600 is pretty prohibitive on FanDuel, especially if we have just 6,300 left per player. Uh, so let's, I, I'm, I'm just guessing and testing here. So maybe we try, we try Skinner first. Now Buffalo, remember, was a top ranking stack in the in the stack dashboard, um, and also you know maybe the edge here goes to Skinner because they do have a slightly higher team total uh, than Ovechkin's Capitals. Oh, sorry, no, they don't. They have the exact same team total. The team total rank uh, clearly. Doesn't rank to, if the if the team total uh, is exactly the same. Clearly, there's some sort of uh, uh, preference the model gives to one team or the other. As Buffalo is ranked fourth instead of sixth, unlike uh, the cap. So similar team total, uh, similar ranking in the model. I think the best bet here is probably to go with the, the savings. Um, I'd be curious to hear if anyone in the chat has a preference one way or the other. But for me, I'm going to go Skinner here at 7,500. Give us the 1,100 savings. Uh, pay up for a, a better a better defenseman. All right, so we'll go Skinner. Skinner is 7,500. That leaves us with 5,100 for a defenseman. That's plenty enough. Um, and as Nick says, Ovi played last night. Back-to-back -back road trip. A uh, little Canadian West Coast road trip. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's uh, maybe that's our deciding factor. Uh, good looking out there, Nick. Okay, so we have 5,100 left for a defenseman. You know, maybe we get a Buffalo defenseman. That would be the ideal scenario here. So I'm just going to immediately eyes looking towards Buffalo defenseman, uh, Rasmus Dahlin. Rasmus, let's take a look. Need to see exactly how to pronounce names. Rist Ristolainen, which uh, seems pretty straightforward. Rasmus Ristolainen, Rasmus Dahlin. Um, Ristolainen will fit at 4,700. And you know, actually, looking back, we have 5,100. And if you look through the, whoops, look through the defenseman, no one here fits 5,100 that cleanly. Except, I will say, Mike Green ranks pretty highly at 3,700, and he's on the first unit power play for Detroit. Uh, that would fit in Ovechkin for us and give us our top overall winger. So maybe we do that. Um, if you're looking for ultimate correlation, you can go with Ristolainen and and Skinner. Note they don't play on the same power play unit, so the correlation isn't as strong. I would probably just go top overall plays here. And the you know the other option is top defenseman, value winger. So we could we'll play around with all these options. So. Um, so to me, you know, with uh, not strong correlation between Skinner and his defenseman, we go Elvechkin and Green. Higher overall combined OF index. Uh, we fit under the cap by 300 bucks. So that's one option. The other, as we said, is you go uh, Skinner and Ristolainen. Uh, very minor correlation. Guys down the same power play unit, but they are on the ice sometimes. Um, the other option is we go... Uh, uh, an expensive defenseman like we're not going to go Brett Burns Brent Burns because the Sharks are against our goalie so we're not going to be doing that 
But maybe we drop down to Carlson at 7,300. Who's always solid. Let's see how that looks just in case. So defensemen, we'll put in John Carlson, most of, most expensive defenseman on the slate. And then we have 5,300. Is there a winger under 5,300 that makes sense? We do have Brady Kachuk. Kachuk. Again, we're going to go to the, the trusty pronunciation guide here just to make sure. Brady Kachuk. The, the all too common TK beginning of a last name. <laughs> um, so we could fit in Brady Kachuk, who is a top you know eight option. I don't hate that either. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Would you rather go expensive winger, cheap defenseman? Expensive defenseman, relatively cheaper winger? A lot of ways to go here. Note that, you know, very minor correlation as, as there is in game stacks. In, in other sports, similar in hockey, um, Kachuk plays against the Islanders. We do have an Islander stack in our low-risk lineup, so I don't mind that either. You know, so I think we've shown three different ways you can go here. None prove that much stronger than the others, really up to preference. Um, if it was me, I would probably go the OV Mike Green route. Um, and, and as Nick says, he, you know, and, and again, Nick is a, a, a very experienced NHL DFS player. He says in the chat that he prefers to play it for defensemen in cash games. Yeah, I don't mind that either. I mean, someone like Carlson is going to block shots, play on the first unit power play, get assists, get shots on goal. Um, certainly a high, high quote unquote, high floor as we can get. So um, I don't mind that. So Carlson, Brady Kachuk, leaves us hundred dollars left over. This looks like a very good low risk lineup to me. I think the key is is getting those those stacks slash mini stacks from the high projected team totals in there, and then filling out the rest. Um, all right, a couple minutes left here, seven minutes. Any final questions you have, be sure to hit them. If you're watching this live, put them in the chat. If you're watching this replay on YouTube, just comment below. We still have seven hours until lock by the time this video will be posted there. Uh, so we'll try to hop in and answer any YouTube comments as well. Uh, DePrince earlier asked about high risk stacks. What do we do? So I think, you know, especially like tonight, when a team like Toronto ranks that highly, uh, both in the betting markets and the model, I think we continue to start there in high risk too. Uh, maybe we don't go Anderson at goalie. Maybe we go full Toronto stack. Maybe we drop down to their second line. But, you know, getting full Toronto stacks in a high risk contest also look great as well. And then what we'll do is, fill them in around with these other top ranking stacks, Buffalo line one, Washington line one, um, some of these other cheaper stacks, Buffalo line two, uh, maybe a full Islander stack to go with it. We, we stopped this short uh, by going with just three guys there. Um, so yeah, that's where I would look to. And then also another place I like to look for high risk stacks is especially later in the afternoon once these these lines have settled some, is let's go back to the goalies opponent team total move tonight looks like a lot of negative team total moves bets coming in on the unders um but you know if a team stands out as plus 0.3 goals plus 0.4 goals that's a team we might want to target to especially if they're you know ranks relatively highly in the stack dashboard excuse me all right five minutes left uh let's talk about satellite strategy especially on FanDuel. you know a lot of our members the Prince, who was in the chat, won a $444 satellite ticket to NBA, uh, ended up cashing relatively highly in that, and ended up with a 252 times return on investment, his initial investment in the satellite. Fantastic. That's the ultimate uh, testimonial there from a member. Uh, Miller Park, Miller Park Drunk, who was in the chat, uh, like I said, recently new member, has uh, gotten some $33 satellite tickets. I know some other members have as well to the Super Goal on FanDuel. And then Pitt Panther, who I don't believe is in the chat, uh, showed us that he won a $360 NHL ticket, the Spinorama on DraftKings, uh, and that should be his target here until that contest uh, that contest runs. Um, so let's hop over to FanDuel. We're going to get out of this lineup. Um, never to be seen again, this poor lineup. Um, okay, I actually had this question earlier, and you know it's not a 
you know, no question it's too stupid. If you never played satellites, you don't know what they are. You might not know where to find them on FanDuel. It's in the tournaments tab here. And if you scroll down under the entry fee filter and the entry type filter, there's a satellites and qualifiers button. Might be cut off on the screen here, but you can see it. Uh, mostly satellites and qualifiers. Um, so FanDuel, if you if you don't play FanDuel generally, or if you do play it, um, you know this is where most of your NHL action should come, because of the satellites, because of the overlay, because uh, they have pretty consistent contests that they they've run satellites for. You know, any time throughout the NFL season, which you can pretty much guarantee be guaranteed to find are crossbar satellites, which is uh, a satellite to a seven dollar GPP that has a, a you know a ton of entries, ten to ten to twelve, probably ten thousand people. Um, you have the super goal satellite. So here's the crossbar. Here's the super goal. Super goal is a thirty-three dollar GPP. Generally, generally two to three thousand players. This is a satellite in this GPP that actually uh, was the initial jump start to my bankroll uh, two years ago. Um, I won multiple tickets into the super goal. I won the GPP for just under ten thousand dollars, and that was the big uh, the ki kickoff I needed. Uh, to start growing my bankroll aggressively. That's why we preach satellite strategy so much to Occupy Fantasy. Um, and then you'll also have the Super Monster. is a $333 satellite. And if you have a larger bankroll, you can certainly get into these. Now, they're tough to get. You'll have the $2 one, which you have to get first out of, uh, in theory, 200 players, but it rarely fills. Uh, they also have $5, $15, and $60 satellites available as well so for larger bankrolls certainly try to get access to that super monster now at the end of the season we're, we're just in the, the the beginning of things here in nhl at the end of the season similar to how the nfl on FanDuel runs a wffc fan championship satellite 250 dollars end of the year nhl will do that as well uh and it's a very small gpp uh pretty significant prize pool for nhl 50 or 100 thousand to first um, so once that starts coming up, we'll, we'll be ag aggressively targeting those as well. But for most bankroll sizes, um, start with the crossbar. I mean, you literally look, there are five, 10 cent and 12 cent satellites. It might be cut off on the screen here, but five, 10 cent, 12 cent, um, very easily available to get. They also have larger satellites as crossbar, 25 cents, top five out of 160 get it. Um, they also have dollar ones available as well. You can rack up tons and tons of crossbar tickets. Uh, and, and end up with, God, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 tickets at once. Um, and DePrince has a fantastic question here, um, and, and then we'll we'll get out of here. For satellite contests, best to build low-risk or high-risk lineups? Basically, what you want to look at, look at your low-risk lineup that you've built, and look at your high-risk lineups that you've built. But for your low-risk, see how much upside it has, and see how many people earn a ticket in the satellite contest. So, for instance... Um, let's find it here. This super crossbar. This is a $2 satellite. This, this 12 person contest, three tickets awarded. Now three out of 12 top 25%. It's only 12 people in the contest. Um, I would use my low risk lineup here. However, if you're looking at, and maybe the super goal, basically what I would say is if the contest has, you know, 40 players or less, you can use your, your low risk lineup. Um, but once you get into you know, these top two out of 335, these top one out of 200s. Um, if they're multi-entry, you can throw your cash lineup in, you know, one time and maybe it hits, but ideally you you, you, you use your high risk lineups in these, uh, in these, these larger field, harder to earn ticket satellites. So just long story short, match your upside and your correlation um, and ownership uh, to the size of the field and how hard it is to get a ticket. So it's a great question. Um, again, just look at your, your lineups first. Um, so for most, most bankrolls, that sweet spot is that super goal, $33. Like again, satellites as cheap as 12 cents. That's, that's not a lot for any bankroll. If you make three lineups on a night, you could put in 36 cents worth of satellites, have a shot at a $33 ticket. I mean, that's, that's a massive bankroll boost for bankrolls under a hundred dollars. Um, you know, earning that single ticket can prove to be massive. Now, if you have a larger bankroll and you get multiple tickets, it's the way to go. Um, any particular satellite questions in general, any specific questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Brian Jester FF, or obviously to us at Occupy Fantasy uh, on Twitter. Uh, OccupyFantasy.com is where you can get access to the model that we were showcasing. Memberships as low as $2 per week. Information is also uh, below in the description on YouTube and below uh, the video on Twitch as well. 
Uh, as Nick says in the chat, really likes the afternoon NHL Twitch streams. Uh, donated 100 bits. Appreciate that, Nick. And uh, yeah, we're going to do these more often. I'm going to try to do these twice a week. Um, maybe we'll get Waleed, our co-founder, on as well. Uh, and hope to do some more NBA as well for those NBA fans out there. Really, the goal is, especially with me doing this full-time now, to get more daytime streams and content out to folks. And if you missed this live, uh, there will always be the replays on YouTube. Final reminder, uh, subscribe to us on Twitch. If you have Amazon Prime, it is free. Connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Uh, subscribe to us. You'll get access to our Discord for members only. And you can chop it up with other members about your lineups and your strategies. And also we'll have scheduled Q&A sessions from Occupy staff. Join those as well. Uh, I think that does it for the hockey stream. Uh, Occupy model will continue to be updated through Lock. If you have any additional questions, be sure to reach out to us. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Don't know when the next scheduled NHL stream will be, but tomorrow afternoon uh, there will be the NFL Week 8 preview. Uh, Moose will be joining me, and we'll be talking through uh, the top strategies for NFL DFS week eight. All right. Thanks for listening. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.